Hello and welcome to the show. It is a big day for us. We've got guests back in the studio for the first time in two years, almost to the day. It's also International Women's Day, a whole day to celebrate all the wonderful women in the world. And there are so many women to celebrate. First, there are our mothers. Believe me, all moms deserve more than just Mother's Day to be loved on. And then there are the trailblazers, the women who broke boundaries by being brave and bold. The ones who carved the paths before us so people like me could be sitting here with lovely people like you. And then there are the women we admire, the ones in our lives that don't always get the thanks they deserve, but have always been there for us, cheering us on. There are also the ones who have gone on, but will always leave an indelible mark on our souls. I miss you, Mom. And we can't forget the ones we haven't even met yet, the young women who are carving new paths that we can't even see. Here to celebrate all these women are some very special women who are a part of the King 5 family. <laughs> Please welcome Roberta Romero, a longtime King 5 reporter who now works as the executive director of our Facing Race team. Also stylist Darcy Camden and New Day producer Susie Wiley. Ladies, hello, hello and welcome. Hello. Good morning. I am so, so happy to have you here to talk about this. You know, there is a theme to this year's International Women's Day. It is break the bias hashtag break the bias now is this something you think we're still dealing with in 2022 breaking this bias i think so i yeah. mean I, I think we've come a long way but i think we also we keep coming up against it and facing it so i love the reminder that that it's there but it doesn't have to be our sole focus we just we need to go forward and make keep making more space for like me that. i also think that we're actually talking about it so back when I was younger, we didn't talk about bias. We were just sort of kind of going against the way. But at least now that we're having the dialogue, speaking about it, yes, it's still there, but now we're aware. So that's a lot of the battle <laughs> you know, to be able to talk about it. I think the bias is sometimes more subtle these days. Mm -hmm. And so it's important for us all to recognize it so that we can address it and hopefully improve. Absolutely. Sometimes I think the bias is also, I, I would say for me, kind of self-imposed. You know, we wear a lot of hats as women. Mm -hmm. And I feel sometimes like I'm not doing enough as a mother and then a full-time working woman. And I just, there's this pressure. And I'm not saying society puts this on me. A lot of what I put on myself, but also you get the looks from sometimes people like, oh, really, you're gonna be doing work at swim class? Hmm. I have to, okay? And the kids are swimming great. Get off my back. I think that focus you just said, not doing enough, we, I think we just have to get out of that mindset that there is, there is such thing as enough. Yeah. And we're doing what we need to for our families and for ourselves and get out of that I'm not doing enough mindset. I, th I also think it's important when you look at all of the things that we take care of. And for me, I wouldn't even put my name on the list. And I finally had to learn that not only does my name go on the list, it goes first, which feels that. very Ooh, selfish. Yeah. Yeah. But when I take care of me first, then I can take care of everyone else. But it's a practice. It was hard to break through that social construct of, I'm first, you know, because mm -hmm. as women, that's what we were not taught to do. Yeah. One of the hats I feel like I have to wear all the time is the hat of being nice to everyone oh, all the yes. time. Oh, <laughs> and like everybody, sometimes I crack, sometimes mm. I lose it. And maybe this is just my perception or what I've witnessed, but I feel like men often can lose their cool and circle back and say, ah, oh, sorry, I just had a rough day. Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit different for women. If we lose our cool, sometimes there's a little, I feel there's a little chatter of like, oh, maybe that's what she's really like. When truly nobody's perfect, nobody's happy all the time, nobody's sunshines and rainbows all the time. We all have our moments. We need to normalize losing our cool, I love, yeah. that. I love that. No, I mean, honestly, Darcy, that point sticks to me the most, is that it is true, yeah. you know, we always have to have that kind of sunny disposition, and mm. it doesn't happen sometimes. We get cranky. I told my colleagues the other day, I'm like, I'm going home early because you don't want to deal with this right now. Um, and I think you're right, like, let's normalize that. Uh, areas for growth in women's equality. I would like to start this. It, I definitely think that we, you know, we've seen it on the national scale. We've seen the data. Women aren't paid as much as men. Mm -hmm. In my last job before I came to the wonderful King Five, mm -hmm. I had worked there off and on for almost a decade, right? And my co-anchor, who did not have as much experience as me, was paid at least $15,000 more than I was. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
calling you out, Eyewitness News, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but I think that's one of the things that we really need to be talking about. I mean, I feel like talking about salaries would be really important between men and women as well. Thoughts? Completely yeah. agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I will say, you know, I was 20 years as a reporter at King 5, and part of the responsibility has to be us as women, because I never asked for a raise. I thought, golly okay. gee whiz, my hard work is going to pay off, and they're going to reward me eventually. But I would see men go into the news director and say, hey, did you see this great work I did? And I deserve a raise. I could not do that. I share this because there's a lot of shame around it, but I share it because I don't want anybody else to ever do that. And that I have your back if you want to go into that office, front office, and ask for that raise. Giving some support around that I think is important too. And yeah. I think that's getting better as I have yeah. these two daughters who are these strong, proud women who do go in and advocate for themselves, although it's difficult and they talk through it first, whereas I don't think that would be the same um, for most men. But I do love that that's getting better. Yes. Yeah. No, that's a really good point. Darcy, you're a female business owner and, oh. and you have worked really hard. What do you feel about this situation? One of the most important things I've had to learn owning my own business is knowing my worth. Mm. This, is, this is what I charge. This is what I'm worth. I work really hard. I'm proud to say I'm good at what I do. Yes. And if someone doesn't want to pay for that, then that's okay too, but I don't need to lower my rates or my value to fit into somebody else's box. I love that. All right, so I'm going to ask each one of you now, who are the female role models in your life or someone who has inspired you or even inspires you every day? Bert, you go first. I will always say my mother, always, um, because she's just accomplished a lot and did a lot for me and has led me with her courage and kindness. But I was thinking on a bigger picture. For me right now, my role model and my hero is Betty Ford. Oh, wow. And one of the reasons is it's her anniversary because of what uh, she started with Hazel and Betty Ford uh, Treatment Center, and mm -hmm. I'm in long-term recovery myself. But she was a prominent, she was a president's wife. Yeah. And she not only talked about alcoholism and addiction, she changed the world for breast cancer as well. She talked about it. So for me to see this woman who had the platform and spoke out at a time mm -hmm. when it was not accepted, she really holds a special place in my heart. Betty Ford. Mm -hmm. All right, Dars. Good one. Well, I have to say my mother, because she is like Martha Stewart and Bob <laughs> Vila combined in one human, who's the best mom, <laughs> and now super grandma, and she helps me still to this day so much as I run a business and work and have two kids. One of them's a baby still, and Aww. so she's the best. And then it's probably cliche to also give a shout out on this day to Oprah, but she, yes. her, her words she did her so much. inspires Absolutely. me so much. Whenever I, you know, have a question, I sort of think like, what would, what would Oprah say or what would Oprah do? <laughs> okay. And Susie? I have two mothers, and I'd say they're both my role models. I have one who was 19 years old and, and had to give me up for adoption. Mm. And then I have the mother who raised me, and both, I know both have spent much time with both and both are amazing women mm -hmm. who made a deci dis decisions that would guide who I would be and mm -hmm. I love that. I mm -hmm. love that Suze. Yeah. Well, I have to say, you know, I'm surrounded by so many wonderful women in my life, mentors, people, but, you know, part of International Women's Day is honoring the women in our lives that work so hard and there's a woman who I know that does so much that she is just one of the hardest working people I've ever met in, in my career, and I just love her so much. And I just want to say, Susie, we love you so much. Aww. On this International Women's Day, I want to honor <laughs> you. <laughs> I agree. I Here is this woman I've never seen someone work so hard to make this oh, show. Thank you. And is so kind and takes care of all of us and is our mediator and our guider. And ugh, okay, oh, okay, now I'm crying. Thank you. Unexpected. And I just say that I love that as women, we're all different and we make space for each other. And, and a shout out to all the men, too, who yeah. let us make this space on this show because yes. they are Good feminists. Point. All to the men in this yes. room as well. Yes. All right. Thank you. I love you all so much. I'm so glad we got to talk about this. Oh, I need a moment. I'm verklempt. And I'm wearing a girdle on International Women's Day. What is that about? That's okay. Oh, it's okay because it looks better. Okay. All right.